Islamic Feminism Islamic Feminism is a form of feminism concerned with the role of women in Islam. It aims for the full equality of all Muslims, regardless of sex or gender, in public and private life. Islamic Feminism advocates women's rights, gender equality, and social justice grounded in an Islamic framework. Although rooted in Islam, the movement's pioneers have also utilized secular and European or non-Muslim feminist discourses and recognized the role of Islamic feminism as part of an integrated global feminist movement. Advocates of the movement seek to highlight the deeply rooted teachings of equality in the Quran and encourage a questioning of the patriarchal interpretation of Islamic teaching through the Quran holy book. Hadith, sayings of Muhammad, and Sharia, the law towards the creation of a more equal and just society. In general, it can be categorized as one of the more liberal movements within Islam. History and Rise of Islamic Feminism Early Reforms under Islam During the early reforms under Islam in the 7th century, reforms in women's rights affected marriage, divorce, and inheritance. Women were not accorded with such legal status in other cultures, including the West, until centuries later. The Oxford Dictionary of Islam states that the general improvements of the status of Arab women included prohibitions of female infanticide and recognizing women's full personhood. The dowry, previously regarded as a bride price paid to the father, became a nuptial gift retained by the wife as part of her personal property. Under Islamic law, marriage was no longer viewed as status but rather as a contract in which the woman's consent was imperative. Women were given inheritance rights in a patriarchal society that had previously restricted inheritance to male relatives. Anne-Marie Schimmel states that compared to the pre-Islamic position of women, Islamic legislation meant an enormous progress. The woman has the right, at least according to the letter of the law, to administer the wealth she has brought into the family or has earned by her own work. William Montgomery Watt states that Muhammad, in the historical context of his time can be seen as a figure who testified on behalf of women's rights and improved things considerably. Watt explains, at the time Islam began, the conditions of women were terrible. They had no right to own property. They were supposed to be property of the man, and if the man died, everything went to his sons. Muhammad, however, by instituting rights of property ownership, inheritance, education, and divorce, gave women certain basic safeguards. Haddad and Esposito state that Muhammad granted women's rights and privileges in the sphere of family life, marriage, education, and economic endeavors, rights that help improve women's status in society. In terms of women's rights, women generally had fewer legal restrictions under Islamic law than they did under Western legal systems until the 20th century. For example, restrictions on legal capacity of married women under French law were not in re removed until 1965. 19th century the modern movement of Islamic feminism began in the late 19th century. Egyptian jurist Qasim Amin, the author of the 1899 pioneering book Women's Liberation, Tahir al Mara, is often described as the father of the Egyptian feminist movement. In his work, Amin criticized some of the practices prevalent in the society at the time, such as polygamy, uh, the veil, and perda, i.e., sex segregation in Islam. He condemned them as un-Islamic and contradictory to the true spirit of Islam. His work had an enormous influence on women's political movements through the Islamic and Arab world, and is read and cited today. Less known, however, are the women who preceded Amin in their feminist critique of their societies. The women's press in Egypt started voicing such concerns since its very first issue in 1892. Egyptian, Turkish, Iranian, Syrian, and Lebanese women and men had been reading European feminist magazines even a decade earlier and discussed their relevance to Middle East to the Middle East in the general press. Definitions Islamic feminism is defined by Islamic scholars as being more radical than secular feminism and as being anchored within the discourse of Islam with the Quran as its central text. In recent times, the concept of Islamic feminism has grown further, with Islamic groups lo looking to garner support from as many aspects of society as possible, and educated Muslim women striving to articulate their role in society. The history and potential success of such a movement is debatable, but looking back through the Quran, 
there has always been a degree of respect afforded to women with the Koran stressing the importance of men, but also women's rights to be honored honorable to honorable treatment. However, such freedoms as property rights and the respect from men are often sidelined, with little recourse being available for those who wish to protest. It has been, however, mainly upper-class women that have been able to vocalize the Islamic feminist movement as they have had the economic security to violate, to violate widely held beliefs. Muslim Feminism Another side to modern Islamic feminism is the activism of Muslim women born and brought up within Western societies. Often those born to immigrant families face racism from the host community and sexism within their own communities. Young Muslim women in France fought back against the issues facing them, ranging from endemic sexual violence to the forced wearing of the hijab, by creating ni potes ni somis, usually translated neither whores nor submissives. This movement has spread to other countries. Borrowings from Secular Feminism The rise of feminism in the Islamic world has also been linked to the rise of Western influence with a political and economic attempt to align with Western powers and markets promoting Western ideas such as universal suffrage, human rights, and access to education. Muslim Personal Law and Islamic Feminism One of the major areas of scholarship and campaigning for Islamic feminism is various parts of the world. In various parts of the world is Muslim Personal Law, also known as Muslim Family Law. MPL includes three main areas of law, marriage, divorce, and testation. Muslim majority countries have promulgated some of the MPL include that have promulgated some of the MPL have include Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Libya, Sudan, Senegal, Tunisia, Egypt, Indonesia, and Bangladesh. Muslim minority countries that already have operating MPL regimes or are considering passing legislation on aspects of MPL include India and South Africa. In general, Islamic feminists have objected to the MPL legislation in many of these countries, arguing that these pieces of legislation discriminate against women. Some Islamic feminists have taken the attitude that a reformed MPL, which is based on the Quran and Sunnah, which includes substantial input from Muslim women, and which does not discriminate against women, is, is possible. Such Islamic feminists have been working on developing such women-friendly forms of MPL. See, for example, Canadian Council of Muslim Women for argument based on the Quran and not on what they call medieval male consensus. Other Islamic feminists, particularly some in Muslim minority contexts, which are democratic states, argue the MPL should not be reformed but should be rejected and that Muslim women should seek redress instead from the civil laws of those states. For most Islamic feminists, some of the thorny issues regarding the way in which the MPL has thus been formulated include polygamy, um, for divorce, custody of children, maintenance, and marital property. In addition, there are also more macro issues regarding the underlying assumptions of such legislation. For example, the assumption of the man as head of the household. Sexuality. Despite the taboo status of sex and sexuality in many Muslim societies, some Quranic scholars have argued that the Quran itself discusses these subjects openly and positively, and Islam is one of the most sexually accepting of major world religions. There is debate over the interpretations of the Quranic verses that have been cited to outlaw homosexuality, principally the verse relating to the story of Lot. See Quranic verse 11, 69 through 83, and 29 of 28 through 35. Quranic verse appears to relate specifically to male homosexuality. Contemporary interpreters and campaigning organizations are working to reinterpret text to allow for a wider spectrum of sexual relationships, including homosexual and bisexual, but there is much resistance from the mainstream Muslim community. Dress codes. Another issue that concerns Muslim women is the dress code expected of them. In some cultures, such as Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia, Arabia they are expected to wear the all-covering burqa or abaya. In others, such as Tunisia and Turkey, they are forbidden to wear even the headscarf, often known as the hijab, in public buildings. Muslim feminists resist both extremes of external imposed control. The burkini in a swimsuit for women that covers the whole body except the face, the hands, and the feet. That seems to be just thrown in there. Islamic feminists, Muslim feminists, and Islamists. 
There are subtle yet diff substantial differences to be noted between the term Islamic feminist, Muslim feminist, and those regarded as Islamists. Islamic feminists ground their arguments in Islam and its teaching, seek the full equality of women and men in the personal and public sphere, and can include non-Muslims in the discordance and debate. Differently, Muslim feminists are people who consider themselves Muslims and feminists, but who may use argument, arguments outside Islam, for example, national secular law or international human rights agreements, to counter gender, ine gender inequality. Islamists are advocates of political Islam, the notion that the Quran and Hadith mandate an Islamic government. Some Islamists advocate women's rights in the public sphere, but do not challenge gender, ine gender inequality in the personal private sphere. Note that any of the above can be men or women.